Hi, it's Matt Denton from Mentors Hacks and I'm here today at TCT 360 in the NEC Birmingham. And I'm here with E3D Online and a LOL's bot and somewhere in the background over there, James Bruton's lurking around, so let's go find him. Here he is, James Bruton, what are you up to? Hello, I'm just setting up this printer to do a flexi and rigid dual extruder print. So I've got Ninja Flex here, 3D Fuel PLA. And this is the? Oldsmore Taz Pro with lifting dual extruders. Beautiful. In this video, I'll be looking for printers to print large scale parts for my giant Lego inspired projects. I'll talk to James Bruton about his open dog project, whereupon James gets punched in the face by his own creation. I'll also find out if that new rear axle on the giant go-kart really works, but first I'm talking to E3D about their new rapid change hot end. This is Rory at E3D and he's going to explain what's going on down here. Yeah, so doing away with hot tightening, so rather than getting out two spanners, heating up to 300 degrees, the uh, nozzle just undoes by hand, drops out. Effectively heat break and nozzle all in one. So there's a nice little spring that retains the heater in place when there's nothing there. Uh, and then you simply just put a new one in. Nozzle change is one hand, one handed, um, cold, and toolless. Amazing. And there you go. The springs now fast in that place, making sure that there's good thermal contact. At launch, the uh, the rainbow is 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this beast, the Builder 3000 Pro. This fused filament printer has a volume of 1100 square by 820 millimeters tall, but at $35,000, it's not cheap. The Modix Big 120X with a build volume of 1200 by 600 by 640 millimeters. Starting at $7,200, it's lower cost, but still expensive for hobby use. However, Filling that bed up with parts could save much time on my giant scale 3D builds. Finally the Creality CR30. A small XY build volume but infinite Z axis. In a way this format is much better suited for my long Technic bricks and at $1000 much more affordable. I'm keen to try one out to test print strength and interlock fit. If you've spent hours watching 3D printers churning out parts, mesmerised by them, then wait until you watch the motion system and tool changer by E3D. This machine is built for high speeds and quick accelerations and allows you to combine up to four multifunction tools in a single print. I was mesmerised watching the printer go in and select a new print head, then bringing it over to its cleaning station with its little toothbrush, where it would do a dollar per print, which was later wiped away by a servo arm. I could watch this all day long, but then I'm easily pleased. This is a multi-metal print head that uses wire filament and lasers to print large metal parts which are then post-processed and finished using more traditional machining techniques. The print head can be attached to most CNC machines, such as this KUKA arm, or built into a printer such as this one. The resolution is 1mm bead width by 1mm layer height. So this is made from recycled fishing net down in Cornwall. This is one of the, the beacons of hope which we put in on harbours all over Cornwall in a monolith style event um, about a couple, two, three months ago. So we took these to harbours all over Cornwall and put them there for people to find um, and ask questions about. Um, uh, since that event we've probably produced more than 50 products for customers using recycled fishing net. So it's really helped start the conversation of, okay, that guy's using recycled fishing net, can we incorporate that into our product, um, which has taken up very well in Cornwall? All right, I've grabbed James Bruton with his Open Doll projects, and I'm going to ask him a few details about some of the tech. Yeah, well, it looks like we've got some really nice brushless motors down there. What, what can you tell me about those? 
So these are originally from Hobby King, although they don't seem to have them in stock anymore. You can get a cheaper one on AliExpress, but they're basically a 92-25 can size, 90 kV, about 1400 watts. But yeah, we've got a 5 to 1 belt reduction that comes off to every axis, which is only just kind of enough torque to actually hold itself up. So barely walks basically but it looks really quite good the other day it was like springing about i thought that was quite nice it was ever so fast uh, fast enough to punch you in the face we noticed the springiness in the back drivability of the five to ones that makes it work because otherwise if it's really rigid like open dog one then it's very difficult to absorb load from the ground so in one respect the low reduction makes it work and in the other respect it's not quite powerful enough so it only just works. On the top here you've got uh, your control system which looks like a Teensy 4.1 is it or something like that? It is a Teensy 4.1 yes with because it's got eight serial ports and each O drive which is the motor driver is on a serial port and there's six of those each one is a two axis controller. And you've got a battery on the top here presumably for the logic and there must be another battery somewhere else for power? Yeah, I've just got a little LiPo on top that's just 5 volts for everything and you know, obviously a 3.3 volt reg on board and then the main battery is underneath and that is a 4 amp hour 6 cell drone LiPo 60C but it still actually gets hot because I'm driving every axis as much as I can which is 30 amp peak and that's 12 of them so you know that's I'm exceeding it's about 300 and something amps gets drawn peak from that battery which gets hot when it really shouldn't most of it looks 3D printed, but I'm guessing you've got some hidden structure in there somewhere. You've got some carbon fibre rods, I see. Yeah, four carbon fibre tubes, 25 millimetres, one mil wall. And then there's four pieces of aluminium on the motors that support the knees because they got super hot. And they've got this cam, which as the bungee stretches more, it gets closer. The distance gets closer, so it applies less force. So essentially, it's the opposite of what a bungee does. So it gives almost constant torque around the joints no matter where it is so it doesn't have a problem actually picking its legs up to walk. Does that give some extra compliance when it's walking or is it just more about the, uh, the back drive on the motors? It's just about the power efficiency to just literally take the load off that motor but now it's fine we can run it for a bit before we can smell the enamel burning off but by then the battery's flat anyway because of drawing 300 amps. <laughs> very nice thank you very much James. If you were ever in any doubt the robot revolution was imminent due to the mistreatment of robots by their human creators, watch what happened moments before this was shot. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know I've got that on film. <laughs> Actually, he probably wasn't pleased. Sorry James, I had to include it. This little droid was 3D printed by Sam Prentice and sponsored by Polymaker Filament. Let's hope he doesn't attack. This is a TDU XL or ED150N, which is named after my son, or Big Poly, depending on who you ask. So this was a Polymaker uh, 3D printed build, printed on a variety of different machines, including the Rat Rig, the Creality CR10 S5, using slice engineering uh, components. So yeah, it's been it's been a labour of love, as these things tend to be, but it's fully pretty pretty printed. Uh, I guess it's taken a couple of months to do, and um, uh, quite a lot of filament. It's got a little blinky eye. Uh, we've turned off the LEDs inside of him for the moment because it was almost like a searchlight coming on. Um, there's a few little glitches and stuff that we want to iron out, but we've never made one of these before. We've got TPU tracks, we've got um, polycarbonate on the uh, planetary gearbox, a bit of PLA and uh, PETG on some of the components. The, you know, you came storming past on that thing yesterday and I was just massively jealous. And, uh, you know, we've got to see what we can come up with next to try and, uh, you know, better ourselves. So we should see what happens. Thank you very much. No worries. Let's have a refresh of the modifications I made to the XXL go-kart since my last video. New twin braking system, so there's twin disc brakes on this now, and that's because of that split rear axle. And of course there's those twin drives back here, so I've got also got electronic uh, traction control, which is built into the VEST controller. The back end of the go-kart is looking a little bit different, and that's simply because I've added this dressing on, and this was really just for this show, and it's just hiding the motors and the disc brakes and of course that new axle. 
All of this is a lot more visible now, purely because the seat is further forward because the chassis length got longer. So the most important thing is now that it actually does turn even at low speed. Uh, and that's kind of crucial if you're gonna go onto a go-kart track. So I'm gonna try and give it a go around here before the security guards pounce on me. For the show, I've limited the maximum speed of the cart to nine miles an hour. When cornering, the cart slows down as the outer wheel can now turn faster than the inner wheel due to the split axle. However, it quickly speeds up again when in a straight line. It's now turning really well and I feel that higher speeds will be much more controllable. Nice. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but eventually health and safety got wise to my antics and very politely asked me to stop. Well, that's it for TCT 360 2021. Um, I've got to say a huge thank you to E3D and Lulzbot for hosting me here. Um, I'm looking very blurry eyed because we've been out every night and burning the candle at both ends. I've got E3D to blame for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and please remember to like, share, subscribe. Bye.